Hey everyone, welcome to The Flip Side with your host Chris and Sean. We're a podcast rambling about the interesting questions in the world of movement. Hey, this is Sean. Uh, I have about 13 years of gymnastics experience when I was doing competitive men's artistic gymnastics. And now I am currently coaching. I have about six years of coaching women's artistic gymnastics. And my name is Chris, and I've been doing tricking for about seven years, kind of a mixture of tricking and parkour. Um, I've been coaching um, a little bit of everything for about uh, three years now. And uh, I'm doing, like, I have my own YouTube channel that explains the tutorials and stuff like that. I just, for me, all of this is about really getting in depth. So, like, I have a really good understanding of the tricking, and I'm, I just moved to Colorado for, like, to get into the scene and so we're really just trying to make this podcast and like our points of views and just some interesting uh ideas that we have and uh different points of views and and like uh, some hypothetical questions and stuff but today is all about uh introductions and just getting to know each other so we're your two podcasters and we're going to talk about um what got us started and why we continue to do what we do sweet uh so starting out at the beginning uh People that kind of inspired me to get into gymnastics. I was, let's see, about five, six. I remember watching the World Championships that year for men's gymnastics, and I saw this guy. His name was Sean Townsend. And I was like, oh, he has the same name as me. And I was watching it with my mom because she was like, hey, let's just try watching this. And he was doing just his parallel bar routine. And I was just like, oh, man, that looks that looks really freaking cool. And I was like, I, I want to do that. I was like, You're super cool. sick. I had no idea that you got started from someone who had the same name as you. But your mom was also really into gymnastics, too. So she was what, like, just trying to get you into it. Well, and that was the thing. She she didn't originally try to force my hand into it. She just saw that I was like kind of a little hyperactive. I was just kind of bouncing all over the place. And she was like, where can I direct your energy? How can mm. I get you to have an outlet? And I, she put it on because she was interested. She still liked watching gymnastics. She couldn't do it anymore. But she was wanting me to watch it, see what it was. And I got really interested right away. Um, I, from there, I started a tumbling class in at a local YMCA where I was living at the time. And outgrew that really fast. And I was just doing everything that they were asking me to do, and I was doing it easily, and I was just, she could tell I was getting bored. So she looked at a couple gyms around the area. Unfortunately, at the time, there wasn't really anything too close. So we usually had to drive like 20, 30 minutes out of the way just to go to the gym that I went to. And I joined classes right away. About a month after joining classes, my coach brought my mom aside. She's like, hey, I just want to do a, a quick private with him just so we can see if he's ready to go on team. Cause I think he might have some potential on team. And I was like, I had no clue. That's what happened until my mom told me about two weeks ago. That's how it went. <laughs> and she was just like, yeah, like go right ahead. And literally about an hour later I was on team and I just kept with it for the next 13 years until going to college. That's super cool. Yeah, that's like a really similar to like a tricker come up. I feel like where like a martial arts tricker um, would be like they would get started at whatever you know. They're like, oh, I want to do tricking. Then they start a class to do anything sort of similar, and then it's like, oh, it's it's like gymnastics based. That's not what I was here for. Or like, oh, it's ninja zone. Like not exactly the thing I was here to do. Or like, oh, we only show parkour classes. Like it's like, that's what's kind of tough, you know? So, but then, but then the trickers do that. And then they just like, they completely destroy their competition most of the time. And it's like, okay, well, this is too easy. This isn't what I'm here for. They want that challenge, but yeah. So that's that's really interesting that you kind of like had a similar, like you were just kind of like going through it. It was easy for you. Like it just ran in the blood. Yeah, because uh, my grandpa was a power tumbler back when he was in gymnastics back in the 30s, 40s. I mean, he that's what he did for a long time. And then my mom did gymnastics competitively until I think she was a, about into high school. And then she hurt her knee the same way I hurt my knee, which is great. Apparently that runs in the family too. And Runs in the blood too. <laughs> I know, it's great. So she retired after that. So I mean... She kind of stopped, and then 
I came around and she was, I was interested in gymnastics magically. And she was like, Oh, well let's, uh, let's try to pursue that. <laughs> so great. when you were in, when you were, when you, when you were like getting started, did you know that your mom and your grandpa also did it? Like, did that kind of have a hand in it that made you like kind of start that you're like, Oh, well they did it. So I probably should too. Well, that's the thing. When I started, I had no clue. My family did gymnastics beyond my uh, cousin who lived uh, a couple states away from us. I knew that she you did know. gymnastics, but I didn't know okay. my mom or my grandpa did gymnastics at all until I was. Oh, even your like, mom. You didn't even know your mom did. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, until after I was on team for about like a year, two years, then I finally thought of the question. I was like, hey, mom, did you ever do gymnastics? She was like, yeah, did gymnastics for a long time. I was like, oh, did grandpa do gymnastics or did anybody else? She's like, oh, your aunt tried gymnastics for a little bit. Your grandpa did gymnastics. I did gymnastics. I was like, oh. So pretty cool. I, I really history. like that, like that they didn't tell you because then it's like you don't have that like added pressure of like, like, oh, how well did my mom do? Or like, how well did he like, I need to live up to like some sort of family expectation instead of just like, you know, you just get to do it and you were just naturally good at it. And you were like, oh, this is all me, you know, that's oh, pretty yeah. cool. That was the thing, like, and I never asked her about how good she was or anything until much later in my gymnastics group because I had no clue. And then I finally asked her. She was like, yeah, no, I was – I was really good. It just came naturally. I didn't really have a lot of fear and I would just do stuff. And I was like, Oh, she's like, yeah, my mom used to yell at me for doing cartwheels down the China aisle in the stores because she was afraid I'd kick over all the glass and then break everything. And have to pay for it. It's like, Oh, <laughs> right. right. Oh <laughs> High consequence <laughs> makes you train. Right. So what, what kind of inspired you then? Um, so for me, I actually did, um, wrestling at first and like, well, like I did like a little bit of everything in high school. I was just like jumping from sport to sport. Even in like middle school, I guess I was like trying every single sport out, but I didn't really do any of the sports for more than one season because none of them, they were all just too easy or they were like, even if I like, yeah, easy, but like, okay, but maybe I wasn't winning first place, but that's just because like, you know, there's also the team aspect of it. I want something that's yeah. like, if it messes up, it's all on me. And if I win, it's all on me. Like I want, like, I don't want to be like, oh, like, joey just friggin screwed that up like now i now it looks now i don't get to do what i could have done because i was good enough you know and um but yeah i mean like the like for example baseball is what i was thinking of it's like it's just such an easy concept i don't care like how good you are at it like it's still like eh, like I, you know and so yeah I get that. So like wrestling was like a better one because it was like, okay, it's like, it's still me and it's still like one other guy. And it's like, who can be, who is like, who's better. It's like literally just like a, like there's, it's, there's no talk. It's literally just do it. Like you just yeah. do it. And then the outcome is what the outcome is. And that's pretty cool. And it's like, it's very intricate and everything like that. But I ended up liking jujitsu a lot more than wrestling, but that obviously isn't um, an option in high school. Um, but then, um, like not like offered in classes and stuff, but, um, but then we, so we were always hanging out on the mats and stuff. And there's this kid, his name is Jackson Lyman. And, uh, he was in the same grade as me and I don't know what got him. I mean, I wasn't really like into social media at all. I didn't really like, I wasn't into that, um, during high school and stuff, but he, I think he was just seeing videos online about like people doing the flips and stuff and um so he went home and he had a trampoline he learned a backflip and then he learned it on the ground and then he was so excited to show me and he goes he goes dude you're like you can jump higher than me you like are like you got the wrestling thing like so you have body control obviously like so just try it and i was like what? i'm not just gonna try it and he does it and he goes we're on mats like it's fine and he's like he's like just try like he doesn't even offer to spot me or anything and he's like just explains <laughs> he's like he's like okay just like lean back <laughs> look at the ceiling. lean back and don't break your neck <laughs> yeah yeah he just goes lean back look at the ceiling jump really hard and then throw your <laughs> knees into your chest i was like okay i mean it oh, can't go that way but then I tried it and I actually landed feet first and then fell to my hands. And I was like, oh, I get it. And then I tried again and I got it. And that was dope. But then it took like another month or so to like keep it consistent because it was just like it wasn't a good understanding of how to do it. But um, that kind of got me started. It was just really fun for me to do that. And then um, I don't know, maybe you know who Kyle Epic Mendoza is, but if there's any trickers out there who started kind of around the time I did, then they definitely know who that is. But he would just put out like, he was mainly a free runner, but he definitely tricked too. Like he did stuff like TDRs and things like that. Um, he was just kind of like an all around guy, just kind of like dabbling in everything, but he was a uh, like high level at 
all of it too not like super high level like nowadays but um you yeah. know like he was intermediate good level and um like doing like double corks and stuff like that so um but i didn't understand tricking at all for like even maybe even like a year in um so like i was learning things from him like b kick was the first thing i learned which took me like a whole week because i was like i don't get it b kick is just like off axis aerial like it, it's just a no handed cartwheel around the side so it should be super easy but i just didn't understand like what the Wait. purpose of it was but then so i was learning all these different things so like i had backflip b kick b twist and i had um i think i had like side flip and i started to get like an idea and we were just watching like parkour guys and you know parkour guys don't connect their moves they just kind of like run here do a trick run here do a trick so to me i was like oh you know you just do the tricks to do the tricks and you can do them wherever you want it's fun and that was enough to me but then later i realized that the tricks connected and i was then i was like totally sold i was like oh like beat to a swing oh beat to vanish oh there's kicks and my mind just exploded and it was like then then the then my mind just got like addicted to it like trying to figure out all the different connections you can create so and yeah, so that just got me started. Like it was just something super intricate that I could like get super involved in. But it was also that physical aspect that was like it's physically difficult. So even if you fully understand it with your mind, it's like it's not enough. You have to also understand it with your body, and you have to stay healthy. And I'm like kind of a health nut, so that was really cool. Uh, so moving forward a little bit, let's fast forward just a couple years at this point. Uh, what? When you originally hit your first plateau or kind of a plateau ish era, what really helped you just like get over that in a way or like be able to continue progressing? Yeah, um, definitely. Um, my like, it's weird to say, but like my past self is what made me like motivated to keep going because. I would see like, you know, you run into all the mini plateaus. You're like, oh man, I can't cork. And then you like, remember you spent like hours and hours and hours like doing that. And like, yep. there, there were times where I would do corks for three hours at a time and not land a single one. And the, the whole time I'd be like, I'm getting closer. <laughs> I can feel it. And then like understanding something. And then that feeling when it clicks is just so good. And then you like, now you can do it every single time and it's crazy. And then like just remembering how happy that like past self was and like remembering that, like how important it was to get that cork for you, like how important like that push was. And then you're like, so why would I give up now? Like, like you have that doubt in you, like, uh, should I just stick at the level I'm at? Is it too hard to progress? Like, what is it that is like, and it just comes down to like, you know, like you wanted it back then and you do want it now. You just don't want to have to try. Like you just go soft and you like, you know, like you don't want to put the work in. You, it's like, it's like, of course I want triple cork. Of course I want quad cork. And it's like, but like, yeah, it comes with a certain amount of work. Is it worth it? That's really what it comes down to. Like people aren't trying half as hard as they should be trying, you know, when it comes to that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. and, and so like they just expect it to come to them and like they forget how hard it was in the beginning, but how they also forget how much they wanted it in the beginning. So to me, I just remember like, um, you know, how bad I wanted it. And like, especially like, so my worst injury ever was that ankle break that I had. And, oh God. Uh, I remember that. Yeah. That and was... I needed, I needed the surgery and I just like the right now, like that's like, that's definitely past my first plateau, but that's definitely my biggest plateau is like, cause I had to relearn everything. Like, there, I would go to yeah. sessions and like I couldn't double cork, but like I could, I would like do it. So like what I would do is I would go to the session, I would train like normally, I would train like things, and I would drill like cheat kicks because that would take off the bad ankle. So I would train cheat kicks, I would train anything that would take off of the foot, but I couldn't do anything that landed on the foot. So I could do cork swing, but like not do a flip out of it, and I could only do G switches, not gainers. And then, but then uh -huh. after the two hour session, after drilling everything and making sure I was still staying strong, I would do one double cork, and it would hurt so bad. And I was like, I don't care, I need to do it. And I would do <laughs> one double cork, and then my ankle would swell up, and I would go home. <laughs> I was like, Man. yeah, I remember seeing your ankle swollen a couple times. Oh, oh my God, was it was bad. bad. It was bad. But during that time, like, like a spec, not even the times that I could train, because I couldn't train like two months after like so i had the surgery and i had to focus on walking like i couldn't walk for like yeah, a, I remember that. a long time and so that was awful i was like there like the way it feels right now there's no way i can trick again but i would literally spend hours like 
three plus hours in my room doing my ankle rehab way longer than I should have been doing it. But it was like, (laughs) this matters so much to me. And I was like literally crying like through the pain, but also like from the pain of not being able to trick. Like I was like, dude, I didn't think I missed it this much. Like I didn't think I would miss it this much. And so like, just the thought of that, of me like literally crying in my room, like, why can't I trick? That is like the biggest motivator to me. Like when I'm at a session and I'm like, oh, I'm tired. I don't really want to, you know, like today, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like, but then I'm like, remember that guy? He wanted to. I was like, okay, yeah. you're right. I, I want to. I just, I'm tired. But that doesn't matter. So you just take some caffeine and you go at it. Cause, and then you end up having a great time and it's fun. It's not like it's work. It's not pushing through. It's just like, that's what you do really want. It's just that it doesn't mean it's easy though. That's true. I, so that's, I really feel that too. Yeah, that's definitely like my biggest motivator. But then I also grew up obviously with uh with my brother Jeff. Maybe you guys know who he is. Uh, S rank link Jeff Sternhouse on Instagram. Um, he he's my brother, so we grew up together doing tricks, and that was a huge motivator. And then I also met Eric pretty early. Um, so that's actually Eric is actually Eric Howard. He's uh, epicness one eighty one on Instagram, and uh, he helped me. Um transition from parkour to tricking so that because he has a martial arts background um he's like a high level uh black belt in in karate so they got him in yeah. tricking just part of training so it was pretty cool to meet him and then be like oh this is what tricking is and then he helped me like understand it as like a sport yeah so yeah the, what's that Oh, Especially yeah. your kicks. Oh, Definitely my, my kicks. Because I have no background in anything. Because you said I just just jump in from sport to sport. So I didn't get like a good base of anything. And he has this crazy martial arts base. So that was super helpful. But I mean, I, I, I got a hang of the flips uh, quicker than he did. So it was cool to like, you know, be able to share that information back and forth with each other. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much my biggest um, motivators to push past uh, plateaus, really. It's just like a constant competition with those two. And then um, obviously my own personal like motivation that i had from like previous you know just struggles through through it so so like what i was just saying is actually something i'm struggling with a lot right now is like so i've been since i moved to colorado i got like i got a lot better than i was when i was training in wisconsin because we have way more gym time um like i'm in my own apartment so i can really focus on like my rehab properly and i just have like this like space you know for me that i'm like when i'm in this space this is what i do Um, so like there's no distractions and, um, so I've gotten like a lot better. And since I've gotten here, I've gotten like triple court combos. I've landed snatch cannon multiple times here in Colorado. Now that I'm like by myself too, well, like I I'm, I'm here with, um, Andrew court and, and, and Eric Howard, we moved together to Colorado and, um, uh, Andrew court's also a snatch cannoner. Um, Eric's on the brink of doing triple cork. So we're all, we're all, you know, motivating each other and pushing each other so much. And we're just surrounded by really good triggers and there's gyms everywhere. And, um, you know, we're just like, it's like in the zone to be pushed. And this is why I moved here is to do that. But, and then I've also got things like cheat twelves and, and backside twelves, which I didn't have before double B twist swings, stuff like that. Hopefully you guys know what some of those moves are, but um basically what's happening is i've done like like i've done all those things and so i'm at this point where it's like why can't i keep doing it how come so if i've done a triple core combo and i've done snatch cannon and i've done cheat 12 and double b twist why can't i do double b twist vanish 12 vanish 9 hook tdr triple cork pot flash master shoot snatch cannon if i've done every single one of those why can't i put them all together and i'm so frustrated about it it's like it's not progressing the way that i expected it to progress and then i go into the session thinking like oh i'm going do a triple core combo i get it it's going to take like you know it's going to be a little more difficult because i've already done like the cookie cutter um triple core combo so let me do a backside 12 into triple cork and i can't do it so then i back up and i'm like okay let me just do a triple cork to warm it up and i can't do it and i'm like what is going on and then it's like it just feels like i'm starting over again so it's like it's but it's just such that high level you know like so that's kind of the plateau i'm at right now is like I'm just at this, like, it's not that I can't triple cork. I can still triple cork. I've done it, like, recently. It's just, like, the thing is, I just can't do it every session because it's, like, it's such a high-level thing to be able to, like, to you can't just do it once and then keep it like a cork like it takes a like more there's more to it than that so it's like it's just it's just me realizing that like i can't train power every day i have to take a step back and be creative and then let my body heal and then do power again um so right now the things that are pushing me past um my plateaus are really like 
um, I, me and my girlfriend, uh, Chrissy, are training all the time, and so it's really cool. So like she's uh, she's an ex gymnast also, and so she's really into the tumbling on floor, which is awesome. And so I've been recently getting into tumbling and that new like realm of like tricking because tumbling is still part of tricking so i'm totally cool with like using that and i love double backs and double flips so it's really cool to like use that as my motivation and being like just have that new aspect like like i don't need to like always do triple cork like i can work double back today like or i can just work on my my technique because like my cheat nine doesn't look as clean as I want it to. Or like, I can't cheat nine knife. I can't even like cork jack knife every time. So it's like stuff like that where it's like, you know, she's helping me like slow down, you know, cause she's just, just getting back into this too. So it's really cool to like, and then also like other private lessons too. Like it's really cool to like watch the other people start from scratch and be like, it's so cool for me to be at this level and be able to help these people. And then like, remember just how much fun it was and not be so frustrated with myself at like the level I can, that I can consistently play at, you know? So it's, it's just really cool to like, yeah, just be able to like start over, you know, and just like, just enjoy it again, you know, and not be so like worried about, worried about what tricks I can and can't do. Yeah. Cause I mean, especially coming from that perspective where you have someone kind of starting up again, I mean, they're essentially, in some levels, starting from scratch. And it, it helps you gain that perspective again of just, you know, sometimes you just you got to slow down. You just got to take that step back, relook at things, and just be like, all right, like, what, what can I do to help them? And then sometimes it'll just help you inadvertently and just be like, oh, like, I remember going through this phase and I remember doing this stuff. Like, why am I not thinking of kind of similarly now? And it just helps exactly. you. Exactly. Totally. To- and like... That's it, right, and it's like, okay, maybe I can't get a new triple core combo today, but maybe I can get like my first backside twelve vanish ten. Like, you gotta like put it into perspective. Like, okay, well, you know, learn something new. You know, just one percent better every day. You know, and then you'll be three hundred and sixty five percent better by the end of the year. What what motivated you? Well, I do remember a few instances of getting over a plateau, and one of them early on. Uh, I was at a morning practice. I just really wasn't having a good day. It was just, I wasn't doing anything. It was really not going well. And in between practice that day, uh, my coach, Gene Watson, came up and took me over to this wall that we had at the staircase at our old gym. And it was called kind of like the Wall of Champions. And. It had just pictures of people who did well, either at national competitions, well in college. There's an Olympian up there at one time that he had coached. And he just looked at me and he was like, you know, what is this wall for? Like, well, I, I know it's the wall of champions. I know it's for people who did well in doing gymnastics at some point. It's like, yeah. Don't, people don't just get up here for no reason. They work hard. Every turn they take, they're really giving it their all. Why do you think I brought you over here? I just looked at him and I was like, I, I don't know. I don't get it. Like, well, you see, I think at some point you can be up there. But you can't just sit here and act like you're taking turns, just going through the motions. You have to show that you care, show that you love what you're doing. Because he had told us before, if you don't really love what you're doing, truly what's the point of doing it then? If you don't love it, don't be there. And I mean, that stuck with me for my first plateau. I remember because for a long time, I remember for like the first like three years, three and a half years, it felt like to me, I was just being bullied to not be on team. I remember kids from the older part of the team just looking at me like, you don't deserve to be on team. Like, you suck. Like, you don't need to be on team. Like, why are you? And, I mean, that happened for a long time, and it was hard for me to continue. But I really tried to push through it as much as I could, and I remember him doing that, and it really just kind of helped, chose me to be on team. Like, I, I should give it a chance. I should really try to put forth effort if he thinks I can do it. Right. And, I mean, it was a simplistic mindset. I was like, why, why give in to it? It's really hard to not give into it, but at the same time, like I, I just gotta push myself forward. I gotta try to get better. 
And then... It just makes your life more interesting in general, too. Like, if you're not trying, you're probably not trying everywhere else. And, uh... Yeah. Yeah, it's like you want the you want the challenges. That's what makes it interesting. And then, kind of another plateau. I mean, kind of like your ankle. When going into my the end of my junior year of high school, I we were at a home competition. It was really great. Everything was going awesome. It was a home meet. Warm ups were spot on. I was having really good warm ups. And we go to our first event. It's floor. I'm like sweet. I get my most taxing event out of the way. I love it. It'll be a good. It'll be a good starting point. Hit this really solid routine, and then I'm a little tired going into my last pass, like I normally am. I'm like, it's fine. I can just. I go into it, and I do round off back handspring double full, and my foot comes down early in my double full this time. Don't know why. Never done that before, and. Essentially, my knee just twisted out of place and hmm. tore my ACL right in half, and I just collapsed to the floor in major pain. Yeah. And I remember just like my coach just like trying to tell me, just like, hey, you got to stand up and salute. Just stand up and salute. I was like, I can't stand up. Like, my leg hurts so bad. I cannot straighten my leg or I can't move yeah. my leg. And I remember they had to put me on, they kind of helped me get onto a mat so they could help me off the floor. And he kind of checked my knee a little bit. And his uh, wife, Mindy, Mindy Watson, helped check my knee a little bit to see what was wrong. And she could tell, like, something was pretty bad because I usually wasn't one to just, like, scream in pain. Luckily, I didn't yeah. scream in humanity at that meet because there were a ton of little kids. But uh, <laughs> I remember just yelling as loud as I could because it hurt so bad. And I remember getting up, kind of just ho- getting some crutches, hobbling off the floor. And then going to the hospital and then telling me, yeah, you tore your ACL. I was like, that's fantastic. What does that mean? They're like, well. <laughs> that's the worst thing be, that can happen. I know. They're like, it's gonna, it should be about a year, an eight months to a year before you can go back to doing gymnastics. I was like, this is my last year. Like, senior year is my last year. Like, I got to be able to come back. And because it was technically closer to the end of competition season, so probably about February, April – probably about April, I just immediately, we went to surgery right away. I went to rehab. Oh God, I remember just wanting to give up so bad. It was so hard. Oh my God, that sucked. Because I just, I felt like I just would never be the same. And I mean, technically it hasn't been because I've torn it twice again since then. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I mean, even originally coming back, I remember going to physical therapy, really, really pushing myself because I didn't really feel like like it would be fine to just kind of give up at that point because it was such a large injury to come back from. I was like, there's no way I can do this. Like, it's going to be hard. Like, and it's going to suck. And it, it's supposed to be a year until I come back. Like, how am I going to do that? Right. And I remember going through therapy bro, for six months straight, twice a week, every week. And. I remember the doctor on my, around like six, seven months, it might've been around eight months when he fully released me. He was like, your knee is functioning like it was before it was even torn. Like you should be fully good to go back. And I was like, great. So I started doing some basics. I had to work getting my routines back to where they were the year before during competition season, which was a little bit more challenging because I remember doing my first competition and it was a little bit more watered down routines because I didn't quite feel comfortable throwing somewhat at the time to me larger skills because I was afraid my knee would just give out. Yeah, especially not the twisting stuff. Yeah, like I have now such an innate fear of back twisting. Like front twisting, I'm fine. I've never hurt myself front twisting. But back twisting now, like (laughs) it scares me and it's sad because I'm like, I could probably do it. Like I probably still could, but it just terrifies me. For- yeah, I remember when you were over, we were doing, we, it took you so long for us to convince you to do double full, even on trampoline. And then when you did, it was literally flawless. It was just like, you just didn't want to. No, because for some reason in my head, I was like, you can't do this. If you try to do this, you're going to get hurt. And I'm like, no, I got to go for it. Like, I can't hold myself back. I tell my kids while I'm coaching, fear is there to make sure you're safe, but you have to be able to work past fear to get better. If you can't work past it, you're just going to be stuck. Yeah, I'm like I didn't wanna. 
I didn't want to eat my own words. I was like, no, I have to push past my fear. I have to work on getting better. Like I can't just say it and not do it. All right. So what's like a now kind of moving forward more years, what's really just like kept you just like into doing the sport or kind of still working on evolving now, just not even just pushing past plateaus, but like really what's kept you in it moving forward. And I just wanted to mention like a few other people too, like Tiki Wu has been killing it. Haruki has been killing it. Fuju, Ryota, like all the Volatrix team is like really, really killing it. Um, Like, and I actually like watching them a lot more than watching like Shosei and Zen just because like, to me, like Shosei and Zen's power is like just ridiculous to watch. Like it doesn't help me. Like it's like super cool and it's amazing, but it doesn't help me because when I watch like the Volatrix team and like Tiki Wu, it's like th- it, it makes sense. I'm like, oh, yeah, it worked because of this. Or like, oh, that's so clean. It motivates me to get it that clean. Um, you know, just stuff like that. And it's like, and then um, Mike and Mateo also. So like Mateo, he's that 37-year-old tricker. Um, he just tore his ACL, but he's coming back. Um, the other day, I just saw him do his first double corks again. So that's super cool. And then Mike has been in and out of um, – getting hurt mike is you know he's the goat so it's it's oh, yeah. it's he's but he's still going um and he but he just had like a rib injury i think he just had a knee injury again too but um he's doing, so he gets hurt he heals he puts out a mad sampler then he gets hurt <laughs> then he puts out a mad sampler and gets hurt again that's how it keeps going so um but hopefully he can stay out of that but i mean just the fact that he doesn't give up like it's like he's like he's like oh i got hurt like, like dude you have such a mad legacy already like but he just keeps going because he enjoys it like and he's not trying to compete with i don't think he's trying to compete with shosei and zen like they're just they're so young and they're doing it zen just did like triple double like i mean yeah, i know god yeah. Mike doesn't, Mike's not into the double flips, which almost makes it like he can't compete, you know, with that side of it. Yeah. And he's not willing to compete with that side of it, but he plays with the, the harder kicks and harder transitions and um, that cleanliness and the flow and, and the really like awesome martial arts base that he has. So, um, yeah. you know, like he just finds a way to like still enjoy his side of it and like really expand on what he's already doing and killing it in the game, you know? No, that's true. So I just got to like take from that and then kind of do the same thing. What about you though? So like why, so what kind of stuff are you still doing and, and why do you even still coach like uh, as of now? Like why, what made you stay in the community? Um, I mean, I, when I moved up here to Minnesota, because I moved from Indiana many years ago now, about eight years, um, I kind of just missed doing gymnastics. I was just like, you know, I can't do it anymore, or at least I didn't feel like I could. I was like, I, I don't feel like I can do this anymore. I don't feel like I'm going to be able to just keep flipping with three knee injuries, and I don't technically have any – I don't have an ACL now. It wouldn't <laughs> <Yeah>. be surgery. <laughs> so I was like, I, I just don't feel safe doing it. And I was like, well, maybe I could try coaching. And I tried looking for some boys' programs around, and I didn't really find any. And then there was a gym that was close by, and it was over – right across the river in Hudson in Wisconsin. And I just went over there and I just applied to be a coach. And I was just like, Hey, could I try coaching? They're like, sure. And I came on, started coaching women's for the first time ever. Never had any experience with women's. And I was like, <laughs> all right. So there's a, I know there's the balance beam. I know there's uneven bars and I know floor and vault are pretty much the same, but the only real difference with floor is that you have music and you have to dance and I can't dance worth shit. So, Okay. <laughs> And so, I remember, sorry, what? No, go ahead. I was just laughing at you. I just remember watching some basic floor routines. And I mean, compulsory isn't really like, quote unquote, dancey. But going into some of these optional routines, I remember taking over for coaching the optionals at one point. I had no clue what to do. I, I didn't know the code at the time because the code had changed at least two times one or two times by the time i had retired because the code changes every like four years and i was like i have no clue what i'm walking into so i had to i pretty much just like went online started trying to research what was going on i would take the uh the book that we had the rule book every day with me to the events and just kind of go over stuff i was like all right like i have to know this stuff if i'm going to coach this again and probably really like really to motivating too. That's probably like really enjoyable for you to be like, I do understand this sport well. Like I did this sport really well, and now I get to like 
learn a new side of it. It kind of like how I did like yeah. tumbling where it's like, Oh, let me learn the tumbling side of tricking. And you're like, Oh, let me learn win- women's gymnastics. Cause that's you yeah, know, know. where I'm at. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. And now I'm like getting more invested in like watching, uh, just like videos on YouTube or doing stuff like that. And just kind of looking at it and being like, Oh, like I kind of, I can feel how to do the skill in my head. And then translating it into coaching it or trying to, in some levels perform it i'm like all right like how do i do that how do i go about learning the skill and that's really especially just with like a, especially with like a, a girl's body or like if you're teaching them at a young age and they're not physically developed either it's like you're yeah. like just jump with your legs <laughs> and they're like i can't oh, I so know, it's to- a whole <laughs> different story you know trying to explain just hollow and arch and just what it's supposed to feel like what it's supposed to be every single time and trying to instill that stuff is uh, that could be a challenge let me tell you but yeah, uh, yeah i know it I mean, other things that kind of motivated me to get back into coaching, I mean, part of it is my mom, because when she, when I started on the team, not long after she started coaching, when I moved up to being an optional, she started coaching the compulsory kids. And I remember her coaching kind of how uh, my coach used to coach. And I was like, oh, like, I should try to be that good influence. Like I, I loved being able to have in some level, my coach kind of be my mentor or like a second dad in a way. Cause like I saw him five, six days a week and I was at the gym over 20 hours a week. So like he's who I majority of the time beyond my mom or my step, my stepdad at the time. Like that's who I saw and God knows my mom. Oh, and man, that's no. why, like, that's actually why I started my um, YouTube channel as well. The the other the tricks fixes because it's like, like when I started, like I said, um, like the the uh, Kyle Epic Mendoza, like his stuff was great, but it just like didn't explain it the way that I needed it explained to me. And so, yeah, it's like I just started that to kind of be that. So same same deal. Like you started coaching, you know, to like be that person that you wish you had or like to continue because you did have that person and you want to make sure that that continues. And then like, yeah, same thing. Like I was missing that. So I just made sure that, um, that I can offer that so that other people can progress faster. That's, we have so many similarities with our stories, even though they're complete, they're like the different sports. That's really cool. I know It's weird. But, Cause I mean, like I think about it and I think about it even now, like when I'm trying to explain stuff is my coach, uh, he <laughs> tried to like, break things like how we kind of explain things like you really try to break it down in the simplest way possible it's like doing it as a half half instead where you do a back half and then in the middle of that flip you spot the ground and you do a front half out it's it, yeah like finding to, those spot points instead of just like like feeling it out you know yeah yeah and it, it helped me so much and i'm like how can i just continue doing that for people like I, even when i'm coaching now i think i kind of think to myself i'm not sometimes or even when I'm talking to my mom on the way to the gym, I'm like, how did Gene coach this? How did my coach help me get this skill? How, what things did he do that helped me get to where I was? Cause like, I didn't just do it by myself. Granted, right. a coach is always like, the talent is in the gymnast, but at the same time, if they don't always have direction, sometimes it's a little harder for them to understand certain things or to get where they are. Like part of it is the coach. And I mean, I think I'm like, all right, how can I, act like my coach to try to help kids, gymnasts, trickers, whatever, just try to be the best that they can be at what they're doing. Try to be the best that they physically can do. Give them that understanding. Cause like, yeah, like there's a couple of gymnasts that I do know that are just like robots, you know, like you like ask them like how they do a skill and they're like, Oh, I actually don't know. Like I just do it. Or like there are, there's other people who like they get a backflip and then they lose a backflip and then they get a backflip and they lose a backflip. And it's like, you don't you it's not doing a backflip a lot you you don't need a lot to do to get that done um so like if you're not doing it then there's there's something missing in your head like you don't you don't mentally understand what it is you're trying to do otherwise you would be way it would just be easy because it is easy it's not you know there's way harder skills than a single backflip so um you know physically you don't need to be a crazy fit to do to get that done don't forget to follow our socials at Zidane Cloud on Instagram for me, Sean. And C-H-R-I-S-P-Y underscore T-R-I-X. That's Crispy Tricks on Instagram. And I also have another YouTube channel, Tricks Fix, T-R-I-X space F-I-X. 
for more tutorials and other things. Thanks so much, guys, for sticking around till the end. Our podcast is only going to get better from here. We've got things like we've got things like hypothetical tricking battles coming up. We're, what if trickers turn gymnasts or gymnasts turn trickers? Uh, why math should be replaced by tricking? All sorts of fun stuff coming up. Hopefully, you have a better idea of who Sean and I are, and uh, you can get to know us as we go. Make sure that you like and subscribe um, so that you don't miss any of our content. And we'll see you guys next time.